Hi, my name is Di Hildebrand um, and I'd like to talk a little bit about the history behind the research that went into the AR book that we are celebrating. Um, firstly, thank you very much to my co-authors, David Ming, who's whose vision drove this book and uh, who did all, uh, most of the work behind it. Um, David Glasser, who originated the approach that we used to um, solve the attainable region problem. And then my co-authors, Ben, who was my first postgraduate student, and uh, Matt. Also thank you to Wiley, Eunice and Witz for their support. Um, the, the book is a distillation of many years of research of many students and in fact we have about five generations of students who've worked in attainable regions. Um, David Glasser started the research, I was his first postgraduate student, Ben Glasser in turn was my first postgraduate student, um, Matt was a, a student of, of Ben's and then David was a student of, of ours and also worked with Ben and Matt. And then we've even had students who followed and who've been supervised by Matt and David. So, you know, we've had many generations of students and the ideas in the book are from all of them. So thank you very, very much to all of you. Uh, a little bit of history from my side. I was looking for a PhD topic and I spoke to David Glass and he came up with many topics and he was telling me all about them and he was all excited about them. But none of them actually could I even understand what the question was, never mind how he was proposing to solve it. And then he was talking about this reactor optimization problem and how to find the best reactor. And I thought, well, I understand the problem and surely the answer must be easy and therefore that's the one I'll do. I'm, I'm a very lazy person, so if there's an easy problem over a hard problem, I'll choose the easy problem any day. But um, it wasn't all that easy, in fact, uh, because it's taken us many, many generations of researchers and we're still busy answering questions around how to find the best reactor. Um, as a student, and I'm talking now for other students who, who are busy with research and who might be wondering about you know, why they're doing their research and so on, I also went through that. And um, I certainly remember wondering if anybody would ever read my thesis. It was a great achievement, but you kind of think, is it just going to go in the library and end up there? And for all the students who are sort of finishing off their PhDs, those books sometimes do get read, and it does make a difference. And um, I did a seminar at, I mean, an, a sabbatical at Princeton, and it was very interesting right at the beginning stages of, re, of the AR research when I gave seminars and so on, and I'd have students who'd actually read the papers and were asking me questions, and it was actually very, very exciting. And the attainable region has sort of spread way past our group and has now become a standard concept in chemical engineering. So much so if you go to conferences, there's often people who are doing research on attainable regions in all sorts of areas. And um, in fact, I don't even think we've actually, they, they, that the beginnings of the attainable region is even remembered. And uh, it's also spread that it's taught in many undergraduate courses from India to USA to Britain. And so it, it has, as a concept, taken off. Um, so what is the, the attainable region? Uh, David spoke a little bit about it, but um, from my point of view, it's if you're given a set of chemical reactions, it's what is the best reactor you can build for that system. Um, Fritz Horn first posed this problem in the 1960s, but didn't get very far with answering it. Um, David and Fritz Horn and co-workers, Roy Jackson, then looked at trying to answer this problem and they came up with the maximum mixedness model. And David says it's one of his, and sorry, there's two Davids here. David Glasser says this is one of his best papers he's ever written and probably one of the, the least useful as well, because it got to an answer, but it wasn't a useful answer and that you couldn't apply it. But it did start him thinking so that when I came around looking for a PhD topic, he would already thought of maybe representing reaction and mixing as process vectors. And so I'd started with that approach and we approached the problem of finding the attainable region ge um, geometrically using vectors. Marty Feinberg, who d made a significant contribution to the fundamentals of attainable region, um, once explained to me it's it's a very strange approach in that you're trying to find the best reactor and rather than finding the best reactor you first do a, a detour and find all possible reactors which sounds like a much harder problem than finding just the one best reactor so you find all possible reactors you could ever build and construct and then from having found all possible reactors you then search for the best one as I say, it sounds a bit of a weird way of solving the problem, and I didn't think of it as weird, because that, that's just the way we started, but that is in fact what we did. 
So the attainable region is the set of all possible outputs you can achieve from any possible reactor you could ever conceive of. And, um, and then from that you can then search for the best reactor to meet your requirements. Um, as I said, we've had many generations of students working on this and from our initial beginnings where we just looked at reaction and mixing in 2D, we've gone into 3D and in fact um, Toomey generalized this to multiple dimensions and wrote algorithms that we could generalize and that could find the attainable region in any number of dimensions. Um, we've included other processes such as heating, separation, multiple catalysts and so on. Um, we even went to the lab and um, We'd worked many years in Fisher Trups with Neil Koval, sort of as when Neil was looking at making new catalysts. And then we decided, well, if we took a catalyst, we could measure the kinetics, but how would we build the best reactor around it? And this actually eventually led us into Fisher Trups and building processes and reactors. And so that was a very interesting thing, actually going into the lab and trying to apply the maths. And it's actually much harder. To be perfectly honest, working with the pure maths is much easier. But uh, the lab is highly rewarding. Um, the work also went into very different fields. We applied it in separations and looked at the residue curve map, which is an extension of the column uh, 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 and, and extended it into column profile maps, looking at optimization of distillation columns and into mem membrane residue curve maps, where we could look at optimizing and finding attainable regions for membrane separation systems. Uh, we further went into applying attainable regions into processes as a whole and it's actually quite interesting, it's quite simple in some cases to actually find the set of all possible chemical engineering processes, um, also using graphical approaches. And then some of the latest work is with David Ming and Michelle uh, Lowe on applying at attainable regions to batch systems. We'd only ever applied them to steady state flow systems and this was the first time we'd actually looked at applying them to batch systems. Uh, we've also even applied them in comminution and looking at rock breaking. So it, it has had a wide um, expansion of, our, of, re of fields using the same sort of approaches to how does one find all possible solutions and then find the best solution. Um, finally, I would I like to thank David Glasser, whose ideas originated this research and who's always been a guiding force and a friend and a colleague um, all these years. Thank you very, very much, David Glasser, and also David Ming. Thank you very, very much for your idea in writing this book and your drive and vision that made it happen. And lastly, thank you to all the Attainable Region students who've worked in their masters and PhDs over the years. Um, your contributions are in the book as well and thank you all for the, the hard work and your input and your commitment. Thank you all.